Hello and welcome everyone. Today I am going to be demonstrating for you this beautiful blue sky tutorial of a distant marshland with a stain of migrating geese. I use four colours today, you see them on screen there. I'll pop a list of my uh, equipment in the description below the video. Uh, I'm starting today with some Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper and I've got it taped to my board at a slight angle, roughly 45 degrees and I'm just wetting the top three quarters of it uh, with some clean water using an extra large Harkave brush. And now that I've let that sit just for a little bit for the water to sink in, I'm going in with my first colour, which is a very pale streaky wash of raw sienna. This is uh, my background layer, so to speak. I just want a little bit of this warmth to uh, peep through in the sky. And now for the uh, <laughs> the main player, uh, this is cerulean blue that I'm using here. And to get this lovely streaky sky effect, I'm just putting it on in quite quick sweeping motions. Just following the idea of these lovely streaky clouds pulling out from that central point up to the corners of the paper, trying to leave some white and trying to let that very gentle glow of raw sienna uh, peep through just to give a little bit of extra dimension to the cloudy part of the sky. The brush I'm using for this, if anyone is interested, is a one inch Princeton Neptune Mottler brush. It's fully synthetic with a little short wooden handle which uh, for me anyway makes it very easy to use, very uh, malleable easy to uh, sweep around and you can see here I'm just quickly using my damp this is a uh, lightly damp brush my uh, extra large brush I'm just using it to collect the bead of water that's run down the paper obviously because I have my border and angle and as I put on the paint I'm adding more and more water on and it's starting to run down and it collects there at that dry point and if you don't take it off, uh, if you leave it there when your painting starts to dry, you'll begin to get uh, cauliflowers, uh, sort of strange looking little blooms of, of paint and water that can, uh, that can be very useful if it's a deliberate effect that you're going for. But if, uh, if you want a lovely clean sky or a lovely clean wash, then uh, they can be rather a nuisance. And here all I'm doing now is just sweeping in a little ultramarine blue uh, to give a little extra depth uh, and richness of colour into that sky. You can see the paper is still nice and wet, uh, the paint's going on nice and smoothly and it's already beginning to diffuse in beautifully. And all I'm doing now is just using a little bit of uh, scrunched up tissue to start pulling a little bit of extra cloud detail out of the sky there. All you need for this is just scrunched up tissue or kitchen towel, something absorbent and clean uh, that you can just dab on and pull out a little bit of paint. Uh, this is a lovely technique, it can be used uh, the way I'm doing it in conjunction with uh, leaving some lovely clear uh, white bits of paper for some clouds uh, or you can use it uh, on its own on a, on a much darker sky without leaving any white just paint a, a lovely dark wash and then, and then pull the colour out uh, but here I'm using it to just uh, put a little bit of extra white back into the sky and I'm going to, uh, you can see it's left some quite hard edges, which is not something I want today. Uh, so I'm using a clean, damp brush to just uh, 
blend those edges back into the wet paint. Uh, the wet paper should help them to sort of blend nicely and uh, sort of recreate that lovely soft diffused effect. And once again, just using this damp brush uh, to pull that bead of water out of the horizon. And now this is how it looks now that it's dry. Uh, you can see that uh, the sky itself I'm really pleased with. That gentle cloud movement is lovely, but along here, along the horizon, I try to neaten it up and tidy it up a little bit after the fact. And I've got this slight cauliflower that's bloomed here. Very annoying. Um, just one of those things <laughs> sometimes. We all make mistakes, but uh, the clouds here are so lovely that I decided... Uh, I still wanted to try and get something out of the painting. Uh, so I'm just starting my original plan for this, <laughs> which I, I won't tell you what it is because I can still use it <laughs> and surprise you with it next time perhaps. Um, but yes, got these lovely uh, sort of wispy soft clouds coming out of the middle there. Apparently these are known as mare's tail clouds, these lovely wisps, uh, which I think is such a charming name. So uh, that's what they are. Uh, so to, uh, to to save this painting, um, I'm putting in a lovely dry brush foreground. Uh, this is a combination of ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. Uh, and if you're wondering what that slight greenish turquoise tint is, uh, then it's a little bit of raw sienna that got caught up in the mix. And now you can see I'm just coming in here with a little bit of extra, extra darks. I've decided to turn this into a beautiful, dreamy uh, marshland scene. Uh, hence the, uh, the dry brushing, we're leaving that lovely sparkle of water uh, glimmering on the surface there. And here where I'm putting in, uh, oh, and <laughs> bumping the camera, here we go. It's a day of mistakes today. Um, we're putting in uh, a little bit of darkness where I'm going to put the uh, hint of some land or some shadow uh, under the water. Again this is the uh, the blue mix, this is cerulean and ultramarine mixed with a little bit of uh, raw sienna uh, for that slightly uh, greenish tint. And what I'm doing now is just using a dry hard brush to just blend in those uh, dark lines that I've just put in there as well, just to uh, just to really soften everything down a little bit. So in the foreground here, I've decided to add some lovely reeds and grasses. So I'm just using a, a round synthetic brush. Uh, this is a size two. Uh, master touch aquamarine uh, watercolour brush but uh, any brush will do whatever you feel most comfortable with having said that I just switched to my uh, <laughs> my mop brush um, it really is a, a day of many changes <laughs> uh, you can see all I'm doing here is I'm starting to uh, 
do a few gentle upward sweeps to indicate the foliage and I'm sort of mapping out as I go along uh, where I want that line to go, how far I want to pull the foliage into the scene uh, to give this foreground a little bit of directionality and to give a little bit of distance. Uh, and now I'm using my stippling brush. This is a Jatar stippling brush. Uh, and I'm just continuing that line, and getting a little bit of detail in without having to do millions of lines with a regular brush. Just getting a light, little bit of darkness here in the foreground, building up some colour, building up some texture, the same way that you would uh, if you stepped into an actual sort of uh, reed bank in real life. You have the beautiful uh, reeds and grasses standing proud, but you also have the little plants that grow in between the uh, the ones that aren't quite so tall or so proud or grow horizontally rather than vertically. It's where all the little uh, <laughs> water voles and the uh, and the water birds like to hide or make their nests. So to add some extra grass detail uh, and to make it look as uh, wistful and natural as possible, I'm using the fan brush. This is a new favourite of mine, uh, synthetic De La Rowney fan brush size 2. Uh, you can see I've sort of drenched it <laughs> in my paint. This is a combination of my lovely blue mix from earlier with a good dollop of burnt umber. And I'm just streaking it slowly up the page giving it those nice little flicks to get a lovely point on those grasses working from the bottom up and just going along and putting them in uh, just the thickness that I want really you just keep on working the paint until you're happy with how it looks in the uh, bottom left hand corner I'm trying to be a little bit careful because I'd still like some of that lovely dry brush sparkle to show through the reeds because I think it's really pretty And the thing about the fan brush is it is lovely and versatile. You can see here I'm using it for a little bit of extra stippling detail. Uh, and you can turn it sideways and just use those tiny little fans on the outside. Or you can use it flat and do one great big sweeping motion all at once. Uh, it really is a lovely brush to, to have a little play with. Uh, I do instantly do a review of it on my Patreon page. Please check that out if you're interested. Uh, but for now, you can see here that I actually made a little mistake whilst sweeping wildly with my fan brush. I've got a little horizontal smear there, so what I've decided to do is incorporate it into the painting, of course. It's a day of mistakes, why not embrace them? Sometimes we all have to <laughs> embrace our mistakes. So you can see all I did there was with a very fine synthetic brush, I just mimicked that sweep that little sweeping line, I decided to make it look as though uh, sort of seed heads or grasses or something beautiful was being pulled by the wind uh, away from this lovely reed bank and drifted down directionally from left to right uh, along the surface of the marshes. I think uh, this extra directionality, uh, these extra little dashes of foliage that I've popped in here gives uh, this painting a lovely wistful quality so we'll, we'll call it a, a happy little accident <laughs> and uh, it might actually be something I incorporate into future paintings. And just in this this bottom right hand corner I decided it looked a little bit sad and a little bit bare so uh, just popped a little bit of extra ground in there. You can see how quick and easy that was just with the fan brush holding it flat in order to get a little stipple effect and then holding it straight vertically uh, to throw in some really lovely loose natural looking grass detail. And now all I'm doing here is coming in with my fine brush uh, and adding in a little bit of extra detail uh, and a few extra darks. Now this is the finishing touch 
for this painting a beautiful stain of migrating geese. Uh, I've decided to paint them uh, as though they are flying away from us, looking towards them as they sort of fly majestically into the distance. <laughs> um, I do have another uh, video where I paint some geese uh, from the side on. They're lovely, uh, beautiful silhouettes to draw, very satisfying, uh, but I didn't think that would quite work how I wanted in this painting, so this is an alternate goose setting. <laughs> uh, all you need to do to get that goose shape uh, as simply as possible is to uh, do a variation on your sort of classic V bird shape, um, but elongate it a little bit, make the wings a bit larger, and geese are quite sort of bulky, heavy bodied birds, so you've got to put that little, little dot in there at the uh, at the centre of the V to indicate the uh, the bulk and the weight of the uh, of the larger bird. So often you see this technique used for uh, any sort of birds and uh, with seagulls or uh, crows or any other sort of normal sort of soaring bird, you don't need to emphasise the body. The sort of point of the V is emphasis enough. Um, but geese are such bulky, lovely creatures that uh, if you look at pictures of their silhouettes as they fly away or towards you, you know, you've got that foreshortening that you need to take into account and they really are quite big. Uh, quite often as well, you don't want to do the wings entirely symmetrically. You can see here that I'm often leaving uh, one wing longer than the other uh, just because Again, there is a foreshortening if you are looking towards something coming towards you or moving directly away. What I'm also doing here, there you go, <laughs> a little cut to some more geese have appeared wildly. <laughs> Ah, sorry, I didn't want to bore you all with showing you how to paint thousands of geese, but uh, the last trick I'm doing here is just darkening down these geese that are lower and uh, closer to us, the viewer. Uh, they would be more emphasised in relief, closer to us, and I'm leaving uh, the other geese quite pale as they drift higher and farther away from us. Uh, so that's all from me today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed painting it <laughs> and enjoyed uh, having to uh, figure out a way to deal with all my mistakes. Um, yes, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, and if you'd uh, like to join me on my Patreon page, uh, there's lots of extra uh, exclusive videos, uh, photographs, all sorts of goodies over on there if anybody is interested in that. Uh, so thanks again for watching uh, and I'll hopefully see you all in the next video. So bye bye for now.